Okay. So this is Vijay Dasmana. Hi. And uh, this biodiversity park is the initiative of I am Gurgaon. This was the place where they used to have uh, illegally breaking rocks. This is a major pastime of uh, the people of Delhi. Wherever you find rock, you begin to break it. So illegally rock mining was going on. They were crushers and all that. वो फिर जब ये गुड़गांव डेवलप होना शुरू हुआ तो फिर वो धीरे धीरे कुछ वो खत्म हो गया कम हो गया एंड देन आई एम गुड़गांव वॉज वर्किंग ऑन दिस एंड फाइनली दिस लार्ज पीस ऑफ लैंड ही विल गिव यू द डायमेंशन हाउ मेनी हंड्रेड एकर्स वॉज टेकन एंड ही इज बीन एटेड फॉर फोर ईयर्स सेवन ईयर्स so you will see uh, this phenomenal change that has happened and i've been here three or four times with him thanks to him and uh, you see it, what a little systematic effort can do all the birds have come back all the rodents have come back and uh, and quite a lot and and there is also now appreciation increasing appreciation among the people here of what can be done and uh, vijay knows every little creeper here he knows every little twig of grass he knows the trees plants shrubs birds anything that happens here because it is primarily through his continuous effort for last 7 years that this has happened So I am just going to shut up now. <laughs> to Vijay. Welcome to Ravi Biodiversity Park. Let's go that side because this is. So thank you for a very generous introduction. Um, so you, anyone who has been here before? This one. This one person. Oh yeah. So when was the time? Yeah. Three years ago. So this place was a mining site for over 40 years. It wasn't a badly mined site, but it's still a mining site. And then it became a stone crushing zone. There are 16 stone crushers between Ayanagar and this place. This is a stone crusher. A stone. It's a stone crusher. So people who live in place three, they say that it was a very dusty room, very difficult to live nearby. Land prices were low, so of all the phases, DLF phases, phase three was the lowest price because of the mining and stone crushing. Yeah, but phase three people had nothing to do with any wildly this place. So uh, in 2004, there was a Supreme Court ban on mining from just five kilometers from Delhi. No stone crushing and no mining. Because water in Delhi was depleted, so that that ban got implemented in Gurgaon and parts of Haryana, not whole of Haryana. Because stone crushing is it's still still there, still, but it's not in five kilometers. It's really beyond. <coughs> so in 2009, Municipal Corporation of Gurgaon was formed. Municipal Corporation, very new. Um, and in 2009, there's a group of people. Who wanted to do something uh, for the city? Who have started living here since '95-'92 in Gurgaon? Mostly moved from Delhi and started living here. Wanted to make this as home. 
but the situation was very bad. Traffic was bad, roads were bad, everything was bad. Public, civil services, nothing was working. So they said, let's do something for this place. So they identified this place and gave a proposal to the principal corporation that let's make this into a park. So the original idea of the park was a very was a dream of a landscape architect. And unfortunately, I'm very critical of landscape architects. So they made beautiful plan. I mean, when you look at the plan, even today, it's beautifully colored <laughs> zones. You know, there's a butterfly garden, there is a herbal garden, there is a heritage walk, there is a <coughs> rock rock garden, and whatnot. You know, and forest also. There was also a forest in. So, I'm going to was working with some landscape architects and they gave this proposal to the MCG. The MCG was very happy, something was happening. They didn't have money. But they had, the commissioner was an enterprising guy, Rajesh Kullar. He said, let's go ahead with the plan. We don't have money, let's go ahead with the plan. So they got some, some uh, root money to work on the civil works. And MCG loves to work on civil so, uh, all the governments love to work, develop. That's so all the, huh? That's the money. No, you got it. Right. <laughs> so all the parts were made, boundary wall was made, the gradient. So, there was lots of stone lying, crushed stone in different stages. So the grit, the smallest, was already used, and the owners of the crushers were staking claim to it. They were hopeful that Supreme Court will, you know, turn around and there will be a possibility of crushing again and the politicians were giving them hope the bigger stone was yet to be crushed so that was used from the boundary wall if you look carefully and in many many structures inside it was used so the design mainly came from someone called Atal Kapoor we lost him three years ago but he gave the design and civil work started and there is an amphitheater which started happening <coughs> So Ayam Gurgaon was never interested in planting this place. They were there to support, help, you know, see that things grow up. So the initial planting was given to Haryana Forest Development Corporation. If you know, forest corporations are commercial wings of forest department. Their mandate is to generate money. So whether by wood, by selling minor forest produce, that's their job. But selling wood became difficult after Chipko movement and there was felt there was a ban on felling. So Haryana anyway doesn't have felling operations. They were going into planting operations. So Haryana Forest Development Corporation started in and they planted. And in fact all the pilkhans here are planted by them. What variety they planted? I'll tell you. So they their mandate, we have to enter their mind as to what, why they plant and what they plant comes from what their people think. So when I spoke to the Haryana Forest Government GM, I said, why don't you plant native species? He says, Vijayji is in the past five years. Irrespective. So whether and he has a belief that native plants don't grow fast. So all these exotics, they grow fast and therefore they should be planted. Plus the criteria is nothing should eat it. They shouldn't have fruit. They shouldn't have, uh, you know, a border value. And therefore, so this ficus virens or filkhan uh, were planted. They got in Jacaranda, they got Gulmohar. Uh, it's beautiful, they think it's very beautiful and therefore it should be brought in and they plant it. They plant it close to 6,000. Uh, but fortunately they planted these jacarandas and gulmoha and Pradeep and me were working in Sundana Sri yeah. there and the, that same gentleman came, someone pushed him to come and see the Sundana Sri project. So he came and we gave him a list that this, these are the native species you should plant and we also gave him the 
nurseries where you can get some of the species. And he did fetch some of the native species. And in the 6,000, few native species also are seen. So, uh, but what happened? They were charging a lot of money. They were, HFDC is a commercial wing, they need money to run their operations. And it was pretty hard. So the commissioner, there was a change of rules, new commissioner came in. He said, why, why are we putting in our own money? Why can't we get corporates to put in money to create this space? So I am going to go that time for this as an opportunity. He said, why, you know, we, we come from corporate backgrounds. Most of them had worked in corporate sector or had husbands or spouses working in corporate sector. They said, why not? So they came up with a plan to create one million, not million trees Burga. And their idea was to, in a day, they'll create a record, plant million trees, get different agencies and plant it out. They geared for it and they met Pradeep that what should we plant. And I think any ecologist will will run away from number game. And that's what Pradeep did. He said, you know, this is too fast. But if you want to do native plants, I don't have time. Contact with it. And fortunately we had moved off from Sunda Nursery and I had time. So I said, let me see what these people are doing. So I started questioning them, what is million trees? Why you want to plant million trees? <coughs> Where will you plant million trees? And there's a big number game, no? Yeah. Now it's even, it has gone to another level. Not million, but billions. <coughs> and trees. Nothing about shrubs, nothing about climbers, nothing about hulls, but trees. Hello. <laughs> so, so I, I said, do you have a vision for this place? Where will you plant? They said, many agencies are coming together. HFTC is coming together, forest department, MCG, we all are going to plant. By then, they had moved off from one day planting to plant a million trees in Durga. So it was still okay. A day was a big thing. <coughs> so then, a um, little bit of questioning, discussion, and I would really, really, I mean, this place has come about because of these mostly women who have stood there uh, for our good job. They were so open to the ideas. They were really open to the ideas. So what is unique about Millie? What is it that you are going to do? Is it, is it a record that you want to create? Or is it something more than a record? So then uh, we started looking into plans and they said, oh, vision to ye hai. What do you do with the vision? With one million trees, how, how can you create a herbal garden? So let's work on the rework on the vision. We re rework on the vision. We said, instead of creating this high end, you, I don't know, do you know how governments work? The tendering process. So the lowest bidder gets the contract. Yeah. So you can design the fanciful, you know, you can come up with the best design in the world. You can create a hidden project here, but the doer or the executor will be the lowest bidder. And you can imagine what the lowest bidder <coughs> these people are capable of doing. So, once you develop this place, who is going to run it? Who will create these or created herbal gardens and flower gardens and different gardens? Who will maintain them? The government is not capable of maintaining high end gardens. They are not. We have seen in we have seen best of the gardens in the country. Governments cannot maintain that. So they were open to ideas. They said, what is unique about even herbal garden? What is unique? Haryana is losing its forest cover. In Aravlis, they hardly have a forest. They don't have a declared forest, by the way. In Aravlis. They have whatever forest they have is in the Shivalik. Why don't we bring this forest into the city? You know, where flora is rich, plants are different. City has never got used to the wild plants of Harari. They like the idea. They said, let's, let's do it. So we had 
planting here. We started year on a year basis. We cut it short. About uh, 15,000 people came to plant this place. Um, more than 200 species of plants, trees, shrubs, climbers included. Uh, we added to this place. <coughs> and uh, today it's a young forest. I used to I used to come by metro and when we had when we were starting we were removing processes and fortunately HMTC had started removing processes. So very reluctantly we were removing because there there was a court case. CR Babu was fighting a court case um, against Forest Department who didn't want CR Babu to remove processes. So the court said who is the expert? He said CR Babu. So let him do what he is doing. Which is to remove the process. So that gave us strength to remove process here. It wasn't in many many places. It was in few places. Most of the place was barren. There was just rocks. Because this place was so prone to fire. So pro people used to put fire here. So that new grass comes and cattle can graze. Lots of hundreds of cattle used to come in. So the, the area of this place is close to 400 acres. So we divided the park in two halves. One half we said you can graze your cattle on one half. You can cut grass on one half. Second half, let's just save it. It took some time negotiating, but this first half got saved very well. So today we have maybe about 400 plus species of plants, 200 which were there, which came in by protection, and 200 that we added. Adding plants is not easy because we need to know what you need to add. And we referred to um, someone called R.N. Parker who, who visited this place in the early 20th century, made records. And the, and the latest record on forest of, of the flora of Delhi is by Maheshwari who worked his who was doing his PhD in 63 and his references he had mentioned um, Faridabad Gurgaon Road and that region and many many plants which were absent in Delhi he had mentioned them. so he became our guide that okay this these are the species that we should have plus we traveled the Ravlis and uh, fixed seeds and grew a nursery here and I think it's one of the most diverse Aravli species nursery we have here. So as the habitat got created, birds started coming in. We have a record of close to 176 species of birds recorded in a year. So they are not at one time, like if we walk today we may encounter about 30-40 species of birds. But in a year that is a record, 176 species. Some may have just moved, traveled, like there was a uh, rufous tailed scrub robin recorded after 20 years in Delhi. Uh, it was here. So it was, this place was flooded by birders coming from different places wanting to take photographs and record the bird. <coughs> so it has become a hot spot. This place has become a hot spot. Uh, we are not sure about the future of this place. There are many vested interests on this place. Uh, we have to fight different ideas on this place. Uh, it's not always easy to hold a vision which is a forest. Because wild places near a city can only exist if citizens interact with it. And the interaction is either in the form of uh, use value, which is, you know, for the pure wood, or it is recreational value, which is this place is offering. You know, like Mangarbani or any other forest nearby or Sariska or Ranthambore because tiger is there and we go there to see tiger otherwise we won't invest in these forests. So finding meaning for the citizen is important. That's what we are trying to work the walks through volunteering the programs here. It's not yet you know reached the stage we have just started this year. Hopefully we have another two years to wound up our operations will be able to give some direction to this place but meanwhile we have to fight these ideas someone came mayor came he said 
यहाँ तो कुछ भी नहीं है आई मीन थ्री इयर्स अगो बट स्टिल डिफिकल्ट टू सी प्लान्स यू हैव टू बी रियली वॉन्टिंग टू सी प्लान्स यहाँ नाइट सफारी बनाया जाए बिफोर दैट ही वेंट टू नाइट सफारी वन कमिश्नर के सर वाई कैन वी हैव ही वेंट टू चेन्नई एंड ही हैड सीन क्रोकोडाइल पार्क ही सर वाई कैन वी हैव ए क्रोकोडाइल पार्क है वन मंथ टाइम बिफोर वी कुड मीट हेम He was transferred. Fortunately, the most difficult was someone who was a friend, a friend of this place, yeah. and he, he was a commissioner of this place. And without our knowledge, he had contracted out. He had hired a consultant for 60 lakh rupees to redesign this place. And uh, the idea was to create it into a spa and wellness space. We got to know through papers. Some journalists contacted us that this is the idea. So we tried to reach him. He wouldn't respond. Mails. He wouldn't respond. And we had access to him. You know, this is the same person we had access to. So we, twenty of us, got together. We said we have to barge into his office. And we barge into his office with journalists. And we said, what are you doing? Say, ah, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything. Says Jim. Look at the newspaper and all of that. He knew. He says, "No, I'm not doing it. it. Must be the executive engineer." He called up the executive engineer. He started shouting at him, and he says, "Definitely, I, I'm going to save this place. I'm not. <laughs> I only want uh, if his plan is to create a spa. I only want three acres out of these 400 acres." So we clearly like we were very very aggressive on him, and he kind of uh, next day paper was covered, beaten by the commissioner, and he was difficult. For the time he was here, it was very difficult. He tried he, from the marble market. He put all the marble here, so he, he made it very difficult for us. So challenges are many, and MCG runs on single officer. If the commissioner says yes, everything down the chain is yes. If the commissioner says he's not friendly, then nobody is friendly. But this place has come about because of some of the officers who believed in the idea. In the idea, they believe that something good is happening. They believe that this group is is honest, you know? and that worked. All the officials, they, they they kind of believe that these people are mad, but they are okay. You know, they are not. They don't have vested interest. Villagers had different notion. They would come and they say, "क्या लगा रहे हो जी यहाँ पे तो आम लगाओ, ये लगाओ, वो लगाओ." Then you have to say, then the, we learned the language as to what they would appreciate. So do you know this plant? We were just done here. So now you have to go with it. अच्छा, जड़ी बूटी. Suddenly, you know, he starts respecting you and the world. He or she, whoever. And that's what we did with the mayor also. Who had seen nothing here? Suddenly he was looking for it. He calls me up and he says, "Ek aisa hi park udhar bhi bana dogi." So human, I mean human tendency, no? So we, we, how do we relate to a place? How do we relate to a plant? Use value. What is the use value? Okay, it's good for cough. It's good for this. It's good for that. And therefore, it's valuable to be protected. So we learn that language. <coughs> Not to appreciate plan just for plan. So this is the story of the park. What? I mean, I am open to what you want to see in this park. I can tell you the names of the plants. They use values. I can tell you the forest types that we have tried to work on in this area. Can you give us an example of what you can do? Yeah, you can also explore rewilding because rewilding is something that's not done easily. Something that was not, you know, afforestation was plantation, and plantation was not forest. Plantation is a commercial aspect. So all the plantations that British did was commercial. Helped by Germans was commercial. Forestry is a commercial activity. It's 
not conservation. The switch from forestry to conservation has been very hard in the forest department. So they, till now they were Rajas, now suddenly they have to protect this place for its own sake. It was difficult for them to digest. So, <coughs> across the country, across the country. So, they, so the switch to, from forestry to conservation reflect in the books now. All the books were mostly, if you read this plan, they'll give you density of the wood, commercial value of the wood. And that's what they were aiming for. That's what they were investing on, the wood. So, um, yeah, we can, as we walk. Sorry. So what's the, what's the kind of, I am Gurgaon's end state, what's the vision for biodiversity? <coughs> So if you if I give you bird's eye view of this place, this place is is on the ridge which Delhi calls ridge, which is Aravali, all the way down to Palanpur in Gujarat. There are a few roads like this. Otherwise this becomes a continuum all the way to Sariska. So Damdaba, Bonsi, um, Jirka forest and then Sariska. So this becomes a corridor. If we want to, this would be the fag end of the corridor because then there is a little bit of settlement, Rajokri settlement, otherwise there is a Rajokri forest and there is a... So many animals and birds can use this corridor and plants can use this corridor to, for the movement. Otherwise we are choking it. Gurgaon is choking it. They, so they want to declare, Haryana government wants to declare Gair Mumkin Park. This land falls in the Gair Mumkin Park. So Gair Mumkin is a revenue word, which means something that's not feasible. Not feasible. Gair Mumkin. <laughs> so agriculture was not feasible. Therefore Gair Mumkin. Haryana government wants to change that from Mumkin. <laughs> agriculture is Mumkin. So it wants to declare the Arabis as agriculture land. There is a concerted effort from each government, from Congress to BJP to whoever, to to change the land use in this place, uh, in the Arab East. So the vision, long-term vision is that we want to, as we said, it, it we want it to be <coughs> sanctuary. Firstly, sanctuary for ideas, that rewilding is possible. In the NCR region, there is no project, I and mean, there are projects, but not with citizens, you know, the, the best bit of this is that citizens have come together to do this. And it is possible if you don't need scientists to do it. You know, I am also a gardener, I am not a scientist. So, it's possible. You have to have right intent, you have to have right methodology, you can do it. Second is that how to, this is a forest, and how to keep it as a forest. What we are proposing to our management proposal is that this place um, has a, the vision is remain intact. It, it, it's serviced that way, and uh, we have to have different agencies working on it. Yeah. Like people who are specialists on environmental education, they should come in and take over the edu educational part. People who are good at understanding plants, it's like we have created 14 plots here, 14 one hectare plots for study. So we are doing baseline and we'll publish that page baseline. Then we open it for the researchers, whether it is Terry or JNU or DU or whoever. Come study relationship between wild uh, rewilding and the bird population, bird population and different plant species, whatnot, you know, whatever you want to study. You do want to, we are creating baseline. We've already done one year's work, we want to do second year's work and then publish it. So that's the vision. Uh, whether it, we want to create it this, we want a label for this place, we want to declare it as biodiversity heritage site. Arena has no biodiversity heritage site, so we are proposing it. But it, it is for the MCG to take it up, so we are trying to push that. If it is declared as biodiversity heritage site, then it will become a sanctuary. It's not, you know, it's not as big as the Sola, it's a small island, but there are, there is 2,000 acres which can be rewilded in the Arabians, which is full of precipice. So, yeah, that's 
we have raised this far only. If you have any questions in the journey, you can <coughs> ask. Yeah?